Hi there. This next video is a recording of my daughter and her father on October the 16th, 2008. When he went to court, him and his lawyer both told the courts that I was denying him access, that even in the face of a court order, it took going back and forth to get me to comply. They said that I was denying him access and that it was my fault that he was not seeing his child. In this recording, you can clearly hear him telling Paige that he is not picking her up, that it had nothing to do with me, the reason he didn't pick her up the day before. And this is on the 16th of October. On the 23rd, seven days later, they went into court and told the court that I wouldn't allow him access, that the order was changed on October the 10th, and that was true, but I was the one who asked the judge to change it. The lawyer told the courts that it was just rejigged to give her client access. She never told the judge the truth. Not one single hearing did this judge, lawyer ever tell the damn truth. So on October the 16th, when he didn't pick my daughter up and left her sitting, stand, sitting on the back step of the school waiting for him to come, and she had to go and walk and get back in the car with her daycare provider and all of the children in there who have fathers who came to pick them up on a daily basis, she was hurt. And she, again, was disappointed by her dad. When he called her at the daycare, he recorded her for 25 minutes and told her that the police were going to come, that it was my fault she wasn't bidding, that something was going to happen to me, and that she was going to get put into an institution if he didn't, if he didn't file for joint custody. It's been four years, people. Remember, when you listen to this, I've seen my daughter less than two days in four years. This man was hell-bent on making sure that he stole my child from me in a, in a constructive, kidnapped way. And he also is ensuring that this child never sees her mom again. And I just want you to listen to this recording of my daughter and her father. And you judge for yourself. Hello, is this Sasha again? Hi, is uh, Barb or Paige around? Uh, not yet. Oh, but Paige is here. I'll just call her up. Um, she's outside. I'll just call her now. Okay, thanks. Page. Yeah, hi. Oh, hi. How you doing? Huh? How you doing? How are you? Huh? And how are you, honey? Are you there? Yeah. And where are you that you can't hear me? I can hear you, but you're obviously not able to hear me, so can you figure out a way to do that? No, I can hear you. Can you? I just didn't know if you had to, so I was talking to the girls. Okay, okay. So, um, yesterday, yeah? you didn't make it very easy for me to come and pick you up. So, uh, cool? well, when I went to Barb's yesterday, remember? Huh? You ran and hid? What? Paige, are you having a hard time hearing me? Yeah. Okay. Um, yesterday, you made it really hard for me to come and pick you up, eh? I didn't know you were supposed to pick me up because I told you I didn't want to visit you on Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, but when Barb ran inside to talk to you, you said you didn't want to talk to me, so you knew I was at Barb's, right? Yeah. 
Okay, so you knew that I was there to pick you up, right? She doesn't want to talk to him because he's gonna. He's. You can hear him in the background writing, scratching down things, and it's Brenda that's sitting there, prompting him. So, and uh, from what I'm gathering, your mom says that that's your idea that you didn't want to come and see me. I'm gathering that your mom said that, that you didn't want to come and see me. to go in the house where you can talk on, on our own? What? Do you have a place in the house where you can talk on your own? Isolating her. Okay. Okay, I'm inside. Okay. I'm the girl for that side. Alright. Hey, Paige, before I tell you anything, can I tell you something? Yeah? I love you. I love, I love you too, but Dad? Yes? I know you're lying to me about talking to me. I'm not lying to you, honey. What did I tell you before? I said to you that I wanted to be able to spend time with you more than we have been, and I don't want things like you not being able to come to see me to ever happen again, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I want. What I want is us to be able to see each other on a regular basis, all the time, no matter what. So sometimes I have to go a little... Yeah, I know you want to visit me, but I can tell you're lying to me just by the way you're talking to me. Paige? I'm not talking to you anyway, honey, and yes, you are. no, and Paige, I don't really appreciate the fact that you talk to me the way you do sometimes. Well, I can't help it because you're not being fair to me. Really? Yes. I, I think you're actually not being fair to me. How am I not being fair to you? You're the one that wants custody. Paige, regardless of custody or not, isn't it the fact that you don't you want to be able to see me? Not right now, not if you're taking, not, not if you're trying to take me out of my own house. Well, Paige, all that stuff about the custody stuff, that's my lawyer that's done that, eh? Yeah, but you're only, your lawyer only does what you want her to do. Uh, sometimes she'll do certain things because that's what lawyers have to do to do, to get an end result. She's going to do... So you're, Well, Paige, before you ask me that question, I want to tell you something, okay? What? That's grown-up stuff. And that, that, and that's why... No, it is, but I should be the, I should have the right to say no, I don't want to live with you. Well, I should also have the right, and you should have the right, to be able to visit me, and... I know, I know, but right now I don't want to. Well, Paige... I do have the right. No. My mom is letting me come to your house. I just don't want to. Well, Paige, that's what I'm phoned to talk to you about. You actually don't have the right to decide whether or not you want to come to my house if it's a court order. That's not fair. Paige, it is fair. Did you, you not... can't make me come over to your house just because I don't want to. Well, 
for starters, Paige, I'm not making you come to my house, but I can talk. <laughs> well, I don't have a choice to come over to my house or not. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you come over to my house. Okay. Well, I'm not making you for starters, I'm not rude to you, so please don't be rude back to me, okay? Yes, sir. Paige, do you love me? Yes. Then start treating me that way, okay? Start treating me that way. I am. That's why I'm in court. That's why I'm trying to do this stuff. Because I do love you, and I want to. I want to be a part of your life. And I don't think all this stuff that's happening is good. We were seeing each other all the time, and things were really good. This, yeah, and that's because of your mom. That's got nothing to do with me, honey. It's not because of my mom. My mom wanted me to visit with you, but I said no after Brenda was in your house. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. 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 Okay. Well, I'm sorry.
that each one of us has the power to be able to take care of you and look after you and make sure you're safe. And originally when we got the first court order done, it, it has sole custody for your mom, which means your mom has custody, but I don't. And it means I have guardianship. And in the courts, that means that if something happens, let's say something happens, your mom gets sick or your mom, for whatever reason, can't look after you, then it means that you wouldn't be able to just come straight away to me. It means that you would end up going, say, to a foster home or you would go somewhere else that the government decides where you're going to go. And that means that you wouldn't come, I would have to go back to court to try to get you. And I don't think you want that to happen, do you? No, but I don't want you to have custody of me. Yeah, but I think you'd want me to have joint custody, wouldn't you? So that I could actually, let's say something did happen. Wouldn't you want to come here straight away? Instead of going to someone at some stranger's house or some facility or wherever the government told you you were going? You there? Scaring the crap out of me. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Okay, that's no, it that's the extent of it, Paige. That's what it all means. And for that purpose, yes, I want to be able to protect you. I want to be able to make sure that you're always safe and that you're always with either your mom or me. And I. Well, in that case, I don't mind if you have joint custody of me. My God, if you have custody of me, that's not. Yeah, I know that, Paige, and I'm not trying to do that to you, and I'm not trying to wreck your life, okay? I just want to be a part of your life. I want to be able to see you all the time. I want us to have what we had before, and I want the ability that if something does happen, that you're not going somewhere that you're not. I want you to always feel safe. And I always want you to feel happy, okay? So I, I, I'm not going to, you know, that's not my intention at all. And, you know, there's sometimes where other things happen where they're not in my control, okay? Really? Like lying to the ministry? Like, like, like your lawyer you lying know, the to the ministry? You actually said that you don't want to come over? Yeah. Um, part of that, although I thought, I thought it was the right thing to do to say, okay, I understand that, and I and I get that, right? Okay. And I thought that would be a good thing to do, but My I'm lawyer. being told that because this is a court order, and your mom and me both sat in the same room and agreed to those days and those times, the problem is going to be is that if you don't come over, then it becomes what they call a breach of the law. And really? Eventually, the police can get involved in that. And then we end up, Paige, I don't want to embarrass any of us with the police. I don't want that to happen. But eventually, the police get involved, and they make your mom send you over to my place and stuff like that, where I go. That's not going to happen. You put a, um, a law enforcement officer in charge of your court. That's right. And of You're right. And I know. That's going to happen. And based on all the stuff that's happened between me and your mom, that will most likely happen. So why do you want to put a law enforcement in the court? Because I already planned it. Because I want to make sure. Because I know that sometimes they don't want to go to your house for certain reasons. Well, Paige, it's See? very, very important. You need to understand that not only... Nothing okay, to do with me. I'll tell you the adult side of it, and then I'll tell you your side of it, Okay. I've only seen you daughter. six times in the last six months, right? It's your choice, Pete. Now, if you're supposed to come over and visit, and I mean, you know, I, we'll get into that other stuff later, but I mean, if you're going to friends and all other, other stuff, you have your own life and you have your own thing, just that you come over to visit with me, right? Now, if you do that and you do that, it's all fine. But if it's... Um, if you don't do that, then what happens is your mom is supposed to tell you that you're coming no matter what. Even though you, I know you. How about you don't if you show like up, Pete? Because it's in the courts. It's it not my responsibility to, to deliver right. her. Now, if it doesn't happen, there's a couple of things that can happen. One is, and if the police were involved, 
that the police would come over and make your mom have you come over. Because right? you'd make up a story, wouldn't you? If I don't go, I can get in trouble from the police. Oh, too, yeah, right. Because I'm supposed to be there to pick you up. He breached it over a hundred times. I'm supposed to be there on those days. So, so the adult side of it is, is that if either one of us don't follow that court order, it's breaking the law. No, it isn't. Only for me. Okay. But for your job as a as a ten year old girl, you have to remember that if you say that you don't want to come over, and that you and that you refuse to come over, what happens is is now you're not respecting the law either. Doesn't mean that you're going to get arrested or anything like that because you're ten, okay? But it means that we're not following. There's judges and there's people that decide on all this stuff, and um, your mom originally made me go to court to get this done just for visitation, right? Lying piece of crap. So I did that because I wanted to be an active part of your life. Not true. And because in the last six months, I've only seen you as much as I've seen you, I've been forced to have to go back to court in order to protect the time that you and I get to spend together and the time and the time that, and, uh, and as well, um, like we were talking before, if I can look after you in the event that something happens to your mom, I want to be able to do that. Why does he I keep want to make saying sure that? that you have always a place with one of your parents to come. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't think you'd want to see that. You know what? Somebody could actually just pick you up and take you out of the house and not come here. And I don't think you want that to happen, do you? No. No. So all I'm asking of you is it's too late to pick you up today. Right? But there's a whole ton of other issues that I don't want to get into because you're really young and everything else. But I, I, I know your mom tells you a lot of stuff. I just want you to understand that all I want at this point is for us to be able to visit each other on a regular basis. And you know what a really sweet deal was? Your mom agreed and I agreed that I would see you every Wednesday and Thursday and every Sunday. That order was changed on the Which 10th means of October. That we, you and I would actually get to see each other double the amount of time in one month. This order, this okay, conversation is on the to. 16th, six What's days that? later. So, I couldn't, you could pay up from Diane if I was to go to Canada. I could. Who's Diane? Okay. Doesn't even know who Diane Who's is. Diane, her, her grandmother? When would you be going there? I usually go there whenever Diane has her, which is every weekend. But why? Yeah, I don't have a problem with that at all. But why? Why are you mentioning that? thing to do is either have her get on the phone with me or leave me a message or something but one way or another just let me know like she can even leave the message 
um, and and tell me the address and the phone number so that I know how to get a hold of you and figure I can go. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much, Paige, for listening. Okay, I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. See you Sunday. Bye. Bye. Okay. So you hear in that something's going to happen to your mom. I don't want you to live with strangers. Somebody could pluck you right out of your house. He says that your mom talks to you a lot about these kinds of things. That's absolutely not true. He talked to her about all of these kinds of things and then he blamed me. And he used these times right now as manipulation points for her to say things that are not true. For her to uh, be manipulated by him. He says that he's gone to court to protect his visitation so that they can have more visitation. But he didn't show up for access. Did you hear her say? Or him say to her, it's too late to pick you up today, right? So he's giving her the chance to opt out because he doesn't want to go and pick her up. And then he tells her the whole time, did you hear that? That I need to be made to, to have him have his access. And she tells him, my mom wants me to visit with me. It's me who's making that choice. It's because of his behavior and his lies and his bullshit that she knew that he was trying to take her away from me. But the whole time, did you hear what he said? He said it was his lawyer who was doing all of this. The stuff about the custody, because he never wanted custody. He just wants to torture me. And so for four years, he has denied me access. He has used this child to manipulate and abuse me for another four years. He has tried to push me over the edge emotionally. He has tried to get me to commit suicide. That was my 10 year old child, 10 years old. And that's the kind of conversation she had with him. Yet the ministry is lying about my daughter. The courts will not allow my child to speak. They have silenced my daughter by making the courts believe that she's this little girl who doesn't understand anything. Her dad's gone into court with his girlfriend and they have manipulated the courts to believe this child does not understand. This was a conversation he had with my daughter that she did not know he was having and he and his lawyer withheld these recordings until it was too late for me to use them. They manipulated everybody and if you listen to what he says to my daughter he blames me for everything. After they went to court and the judge made an order putting custody in his care, what he did was he picked my daughter up. He, he canceled her dance, first of all. He canceled her daycare. He canceled her dance so that she didn't, he didn't have those expenses anymore. Then he started leaving her with a strange woman named Mar Farley, Marge Farley. He would go to work. Paige would go to school till 3 o'clock. Right after school, she would go to Marge's house, a lady she'd never met before. And until one o'clock in the morning when Pete got off work, driving buses, then he would go and he would pick Paige up at one o'clock in the morning and bring her back to his place. For two months, this child had no mother and no father. And did you hear him say to her, I want to make sure you have your mom or your dad and that I can protect you and make sure you're happy. This child was distressed, distraught and crying her eyes out to come home, begging saying that she keeps telling him she wants to go home and he continues to go to court and tell the courts that she's so traumatized by me that she doesn't want access to me. She wants nothing to do with me. She doesn't call me because she doesn't want to talk to me. This is what he tells the court and nobody, including my lawyer, bothered to bring this to the attention of the court. Nobody questioned him about this. Not a single word of this recording was ever produced to the courts. And to this day, I have no access to my daughter and can't get access to my daughter because the courts have made it impossible.